How's it guys? Uh, welcome to the channel. This is uh, day three of our Kruger trip. So we've just finished up our extreme birding weekend with the West Strand Honorary Rangers. Hope you watched that video. Um, and now we're off uh, on our own adventure for the most part. We're going to go first north today, try and find the racket trail roller again, and then uh, come south again. Uh, then we're staying at Sereni, Shingwetsi, Satara, Lataba, or oh, Lataba, Satara. Um, so yeah, we're just going to head off now. Um, this morning, packing the car, which is there now, sitting and waiting for us, was a bit of a exercise in Jenga yeah or Lego building or Tetris or Tetris actually yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah looking forward to day three uh, almost time to get going and uh, we'll catch you as we drive along cool cool Big herd, huh? You do get some uh, Daga boys at Sereni. You just be careful with the baby. Oh, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check the calves, they're quite cute. Yeah. The bone will ask you that. The bone would hold in their head to the horns of the Really? And I'll ask it. No, I think they just born with like, small nubs of horns. Hey guys, so we just getting to the Pafuri Bridge now. So it's taken us just over 90 minutes to get here from Punda. Very quiet on the roads this morning. Uh, so we're just gonna stop now and uh, get out of the car and just check if you can see the home spine tail that we saw here yesterday. may attack us but uh, so be it um, so yeah we're just gonna stop here for a little while and then we're gonna head across to the racket tail rollers again and see if we can find them so while we were on the bridge looking out for the bomb spine tail uh, Prashin and I decided to try our hand at uh, getting uh, the little swifts that were flying up and down uh, on camera as well so it was uh, putting the a1 uh, to the test and I must say that uh, it uh, proved to be quite remarkable the A1 picked up the autofocus quite uh, well on on these very small birds that uh, you know moved very fast into an auto frame and once it picked up the the bird itself it tracked it very well and I was shooting with the um, electronic shutter at uh, you know 30 frames per second um, which uh, gave some rolling shutter uh, and, and you'll see that in some of the images but uh, I think you know I was amazed that most of the images are sharp and in focus so it was a good exercise I think to just uh, test out the camera body um, and the lens I was using and uh, yeah, it uh, proved to be quite good. Hey guys, so we came back to where the racket tail rollers were yesterday in the hopes of spotting them. Um, from the uh, Pafuri Bridge, uh, we drove following the mile markers and we on the 8 mile marker almost um, and we looking at the tree they were in yesterday but there's no sign of them it was just a crested barbet that flew across um, 
we did get to see some helmeted strikes a little bit further on uh, we went down to see if we can maybe see them and they've moved you know further down the road but no luck there so we're gonna sit here maybe another 10 minutes or so uh, it's just going about uh, 10 o'clock I think and we're then going to make our way to the Pafuri picnic spot, uh, freshen up, have breakfast and then start driving down to Sereni where we checked in today. Yeah, we see this yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we're just seeing a paradise flycatcher and he's flown across. Very pretty birds as well, blue head, orange back and long streamers. Um, okay, so the paradise flycatcher is still in the tree. I'm going to move a little forward to try and get him. But the racket tails aren't here, so... We tried our best to get them, but I think we were just lucky yesterday to get them. But it's always good to, you know... Persevere and try again. Persevere and try again. Um, now that we know sort of where the location is, the next time we visit, we can probably try and check them out as well. How's it guys? Uh, so we stopped on the Fafuri bridge again, trying to see the Bohm's pine tail, but we didn't see him now. I think in the morning when we stopped, I think I saw one, so it did flash white underneath. So possible that it was a bone spine tail but it's very easily confused with the little swifter we're going this way machine yes that's correct okay and the bones has uh, spines for tail but i think the big the other big difference is the flash of white underneath uh, where the little swift is just dark black okay we've come on some elephants now on the way to the picnic spot and I'm in half a mind to actually turn around and go down the other road. So these guys are enjoying the shade a little bit too much, I think, for me to try and disturb them. We go around and add another two kilometers to our trip, but that's fine. What happened to the snare? Yeah, I think that's a victim of the snares in the area. It's gonna die soon, right? No, it'll probably live a long time on three legs. How's it guys? We back at the Pafuri picnic spot. Give a quick turn around. So, Rashid and I came through again this morning. Nice uh, spot to stop at in the midday because it's nice and cool here under the trees. And we actually got some good birding done. We got the wattle eye today and we got the um, ashy flycatcher again. Yeah, we heard the tropical bobo. Uh, we've got a bearded woodpecker. Bearded woodpecker, yeah. And then we got colored sunbirds. Uh, Obviously, um, the Woodlands Kingfisher are calling quite strongly. White, so you can hear the white-fronted beaters as well. Yeah. yeah. Saw a bird that looked like a little sparrow hawk, but can't confirm. And yeah, we got a few cool drinks, um, had breakfast. There are some services here, so you get... Uh, you can buy a uh, cold drink at the play at the yeah. picnic spot between seven and half and two thirty. Two thirty, and you can also, you know, hire a scuttle bry, um, and you can also do some brying as well. Yeah. And there's taps and stuff so, as well, so it's a good spot to have a picnic in the heat of the day. Um, now it's getting to be, I'd say, 35, 36 degrees. They said the uh, high of 37 today, but yeah. Yeah, so yeah. the drive back, we have to go back to Punda now uh, yeah. because we need to full fuel and get some bread and rolls and stuff like that. So we're gonna do that now. Uh, it's been a quiet drive in terms of, you know, big animals, we haven't seen much, but they've seen cheetah here, I think three days in a row now. 
Oh, we just get the the guy who works here is seeing a tropical bobo, so we're just gonna go try and get that. Okay, so we're back now. Um, Manla, the guy who runs the picnic spot here, um, showed us a tropical bobo in the open. Too, in the too yeah, open. in the open. So that was a good photo to get because uh, the tropical bobo actually looks quite different from the normal uh, southern bobo. southern bobo. Um, so yeah, if you are coming to the Papuri picnic spot, you know, hit Manla up. He's quite knowledgeable on his birds and he's actually had a good chat with us. So yeah, he can show you what's around and what's the specials that you should see um, in the site. I think it's a really great uh, birding picnic site. And uh, if we in the area, definitely come here, have yeah. lunch, have yeah. breakfast. And I think just a note for anyone that, that's coming here to take pictures of the birds uh it's because it's quite shady uh you'll probably be using like iso 3 200 to 6400 mm. um unless you bring a flash but i don't advise using the flash because obviously that's disturbing the birds um but yeah just prepare be prepared for that yeah so if you've got a monopod use that as well you can yeah. use lower shutter speed yeah uh unless you have like surgeon hands and you can do yeah, but the, the, it's, it's quite small birds that jump around, so you kind of need a fast, pretty yeah. fast shutter speed anyway. Um, yeah, but I've yeah, lots of I think again. Lots of specials around here, and I think um, if you guys are in the Punda or Pafuri region or, or anywhere up north, I think this is a, a must for anyone that's into birds or uh, taking some good bird pictures. So yeah, highly recommend it. Okay, so we're gonna head off again. There's a woodlands just calling again. Uh, we're going to head off now, back to Punda and then to Sereni. Okay guys, tonight we are in Sereni bush camp. We've got a four bed unit. So that's the bathroom, Prashin's in that room, that has two beds, massive lounge, the kitchen, we unloaded some of the ammo boxes already, so it's got its stove, sink and, oh let me get around, and it's got a fridge, which is quite a sizable fridge, so it's quite well equipped. Uh, it's got all the pots and pans that you may need so you could stay here for you know a few days and be quite comfortable massive lounge no TV obviously but it's not a train smash if you're in the bush Massive balcony with a view of oh, tree squirrel climbing up the tree there. Nice view out onto what is a river, but you can't really see it from here. Uh, I've stayed here previously and seen um, fish eagles actually diving and catching food on the river, but not on this section. I was, I think, at unit 13 or 14. So nice small bride down there. Massive patio set. This machine will be unpacking the stuff. And then second bedroom with um, double bed and ensuite with a bath. No shower in this second bedroom. Um, so yeah, quite a lovely unit that we have here. Pretty, it's just for one day. So no air cons, but fans and high thatch roof. So it's quite cool, even though it's 35 or 36 degrees outside at the moment. We are in unit nine. And it's quite empty, hey? It's just one 
There's ah, one person. Two. Away. Uh, I think we'll settle in a little bit. Try and see if we can see the Woodlands Kingfisher. And if we can't, make our way out for a quick uh, afternoon drive. Trundle, as they call it. Just watch she doesn't come around like this yeah. again. Yeah. How's it guys? We had a bit of an interesting start to our afternoon drive already. Um, you'll see I've got footage uh, of a standoff with a big uh, female elephant uh, just coming out of the camp, not even two kilometers out of the camp I'd say. Because um, we're not even on the main loop yet. And then we we passed a water buffalo that was in a mud waddle possibly like two meters away from the road i think a meter actually yeah and i guess he didn't see us and we didn't see him so he didn't I don't mark uh react so 15 minutes of uh joy so far i was just telling prasheen he was driving earlier so it was lucky that he wasn't driving. I think that standoff with the elephant would have uh, meant us turning around and having to go back and change pants. But uh, in the end, I think. Um, oh, nice steenbok up the road there, Prashin. Mm. Is a steenbok? Is it a kreisbok? No, I'm not sure. I think it's a kreisbok. Yeah. It's the right habitat for them. Yeah. Different color. You can see the different yeah, color. It's much a more mottled color. Yeah, that's a good spot. Um, so yeah, uh, you'll see in the video. I had my engine running, and um, I was actually looking at elephants further up the road. Hammerkop. Yeah. We can still log, right? Yeah. So you'll see in the video. Um, that I uh, was watching elephants further up the road or oh, you won't see that in the video because the camera was the other way around but I was watching elephants further up the road and this elephant sort of came in from the side and just stood right in front of uh, the car and I had my engine running at the time so what I did was quickly switch the engine off don't move and ask Prashin to you know keep silent and then the elephant smelt us, stood us off, he retreated and then moved away into the bush off to the side. Um, female elephants generally not as uh, you know aggressive as the males but I guess with uh, youngsters around as well uh, she felt a little bit threatened so she came in front of the vehicle and you know stood us off but um, I think a good tip whenever you around elephants is you know try to switch the engine off don't keep the engine running uh, give them their space and this one blindsided us because of the thick mopani felt that we were in and I didn't see her coming you know in the opposite direction to which the herd was moving so watch the herd and watch how they're moving and don't uh, cut members of the herd off because that can cause panic as well but otherwise um, you know we're gonna I think just get to this main loop and do maybe two or three kilometers and then we're gonna have to head back again because the gate will close at, at half past six and I also don't want to be driving in too dark getting back to camp because there are elephants around as well what are you saying Prashin? 
are unmarked. Fabulous. Did you get your shot? Nope. Oh, they, okay. They got into the tickets. Okay, so we're moving again, guys. Um, and yeah, interesting start or interesting end to the day as it is, because I think the sun's setting, and uh, if we don't see much else, I think this will be the last uh, video for the vlog.